can see that's four centimeters. So let's write that down, four centimeters. And then the tomato. Now let's see, what about this one here? That's four centimeters as well. Maybe they'll grow so tall that we'll be able to climb up and reach into the sky and find out what's happening on the clouds. Maybe not, eh? I know, we'll go up in the green balloon instead. Gather around one and all You gotta answer the call Listen now, look around you There's a magical world to explore Our seeds are growing. Oh, hello. Me and Skipper have just noticed how well our vegetable seeds are growing. Come inside and we can tell Lily Rose. Hello! hello. Welcome to the Green Balloon Club. Lily Rose, have you noticed that your vegetable seeds have started growing? Uh, what are you doing? We're printing a green star. <laughs> I found our sweet spot. That was the bluebell, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. And I spotted some. So I'm giving myself a green star. And a green hand. <laughs> I think we'd better do the register before Ant gets covered too. Me too. <laughs> OK, first up, green star Lily, it's you. Two, four, six, eight. I think green is really great. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Lily Rose. Well, I think we should all like green. We are the Green Balloon Club. green cart. Good girl, Skipper. Now it's me. Two, four, six, eight. Jay thinks green is really great. <laughs> now it's you, Nick, Chris. Two, four, six, eight. I think green is really great. <laughs> Good. Now it's you. Do you like green? Join in with us. Two, Two four, six, eight. We think green is really great! Of course we do, because... We're the Green Balloon Club! Then let's do the Green Balloon Club chant! Yay! We love animals, plants and birds We love snails and slugs Large and small, we love them all Can I see your green star, please, Lily Rose? Look, here it is. Oh, yeah. I drew a picture of some bluebells on it. Can I stick it in the scrapbook? Definitely, that's fantastic. Did you spot any bluebells this week? Green Balloon Club members Lydia, Thomas, Edward and Kimberly went out especially to look for some, and they found loads. In fact, I think they want to show us. Is that them down there? There's certainly a lot of bluebells. to see a special flower. Come on. See the red. No, I need the right one. Let's try over there. Look over there. I can see lots of them. Do you know what they are? Bluebells. Blue 
the flowers are shaped like bells and the stem curves over to make the flowers droop like this. Each stalk has lots of flowers attached to it. Yeah, look. Oh, yeah. And each separate bluebell flower is made up of six petals. One, two, three, four, five, six. They are all joined together so they look like a bell shape. Oh, yeah. Look, the petals have curly frilly edges. They're really pretty. These ones are blue, but you can also see white, grey and lilac ones. The white and purple ones must be a rare type. Yeah. yeah. I've hardly seen any. Let's go and look at some more blue and purple ones. I wonder what they smell like. They don't really smell of anything. Bluebells are so beautiful, but we mustn't pick any so others can enjoy them too. Maybe you've seen some bluebells where you live. Bye! Bye! Bye. Thank you! Those bluebells are so beautiful, weren't they? They were, Lily Rose. The woods are particularly lovely at this time of year. I love all the trees and flowers coming out. Me too. Everything seems to be growing at this time of year. And look at this nature, Chris. Oh, wow. What's this, then? It's my conca tree. And where did it come from? Jelly. Then Jelly let it grow a bit bigger and now she gave it to me. And these bits are really sticking. It's got big lovely leaves. Bigger. And now she gave it to me. And these bits are really sticking. It's got big lovely leaves. Wow, so everyone's had a go with this tree then, yes, haven't they? Yes, feel this side. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. That shows it's nice and healthy. And these leaves are great, aren't they? Just like miniature conker mm -hmm. trees. And when it grows really big, we'll have our own conker tree. That would be great. We can get conkers off it. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Well, make sure you take extra special care of that then. I will. You know what? Looking at these trees, there's something else I really like in the woods at this time of year. What's that? Ah, it's the birds. At this time of year, there's loads of birds and they're all singing their heads off. And they like to do it first thing in the morning, particularly. But why do they do that? Well, funny you should ask. The ground crew and I were out the other day trying to find out just that very thing. Oh, me, me, me. Can I do it, please? Me, me, me. Can, can you do what? Can I do the mission machine? I've never done that because all the others are bigger than me. Well, of course you can. Are you sure you can reach? Yes, I'm big enough now. At dawn, the birds like to sing, sitting in many a tree. Report back on how many you hear or even see. The ground and the trees. While it was still dark, we walked to the forest. There are lots of trees there where the birds like to live. See anything in the trees? Keep going, Adam. Okay, ground crew, do you want to take a seat there? Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to sit and we're going to be quiet for a few seconds. So, what can you hear then? I can hear birds singing. It's the dawn chorus. They sing 20 times louder in the morning than they do in the rest of the day. And they're Whoa. singing because they want to try and find a friend. I can so it kind of sounds like a band where there's lots of different instruments. It's like flutes and flutes. That's right, they're all kind of quite soft instruments, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But flutes good because blackbirds sound quite like flutes. Okay, so how about we go and see if we can see some of these birds as well then? Let's go and have a look. So we're going to have to put our flutes to the tree. Up there? Can you see? Yeah. If we go to the tent over there, then I can show you the spotter file and we can have a look and see if we can tell which birds were singing the songs this morning. How's that sound? Good. Yeah? Fine. Should we do that then? Yeah. OK, let's go this way then. Can you still hear any of the birds singing? Let's have a listen. Should we try and do some impressions? Can anyone copy? The bird song. <laughs> 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 
fantastic. Now let me just get my spotter's file and I'm going to show you a picture of a bird that's called a great tit. It goes, teacher, teacher, teacher. Did you ever get that? Teacher, teacher, teacher. That's it, that's fantastic. So it sounds a bit like teacher, doesn't it? But this next bird on here, we definitely heard earlier. This is a blackbird. It goes a little bit like this. Excellent. Well, they're really good blackbirds. Okay, should we go and try and find some more of our feathered friends then? Okay. Yeah. There are so many songs to listen to from birds like robins, blackbirds, great tits, and even a woodpecker. Mission accomplished. Back to you in the grey balloon. Look at our beans. They're growing really well. They're really big. It's amazing, isn't it, that all this was just in one little bean? Don't you think it's time we move them out of these cups and put them into some proper earth? Yes, Lady Chris is going to get some big pots. Oh, Skipper, you brought the pots. Oh, thanks, Skipper. Fantastic. So what do we have to do first? Well, first we have to get these pots and we have to get the roots. Okay. I know. How about you do the runner bean and I do the kidney bee? Good idea. There. There you go. So you have all the kidney beans and I have all the runner bean. Next pot is lily roses. So again, got to take it all out. Oh, Ooh, there's lots look. of water in lily roses. <laughs> now, to get that. Oh, that one's very hard, isn't it? There. Who's his next? Ants. All right. So again, we have to be very careful with the roots, don't we? We do. There we go. There, I think that's just there. about done. And last but not least, mine. It'll be yours. Right. It's amazing how well they hold on to the pieces of paper. Yeah. Oh. There. there you go. Oh, put that back in the pot, please. There. Now we've got to use a dibber. If we just put them... Do you want me to hold to... Oh, thank you, Cat. What we have to do, we have to... Like, kind of just stick it into the soil. So there's a hole. And you need one of the shoots. Just drop it in. Make sure the roots are covered up. There we go. And then another big hole. And we just... Oh. Drop this one in as well. There we are. And then we'll have another one up here. Right, and another one. This one's got a good hole. And then we just, and last but not least. There. there, I think that's mine done. Now we have to do mine. Yep, I'll hold them for you, Cat. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Have you noticed that the runner beans have grown much longer than the kidney beans? That's because they're climbing plants. Soon they'll try and find something to climb up. Yep. And then, there you go. Make sure you dig a really big hole because this one's got really long roots. Yeah, that's a good one, Cat. Those roots look like spaghetti. <laughs> and lastly, but not leastly, there. I can't wait till the beans actually grow so we can eat them. Hey Skipper, look. There's a beetroot plant on the website this week. 
Maybe that's the secret picture password. Or perhaps it's the bluebell. Which would you choose? The beetroot or the bluebell? Oh, you think it's the bluebell, do you, Skipper? Well, let's have a go, shall we? You're right. How do you know that? You're so good at this. So this week's password is the bluebell. Well, now we're in the website. Do you have a little look around? How about this bottle, Lily Rose? Yes, that'll be perfect. Nature Chris, please can I use this cork? Of course you can, Lily Rose. Well, what are you two up to? We'll show you in a minute. <laughs> there, now we've got everything. Shall we start making our vegetable prints? Yes, let's start off with the orange. This is a washing up sponge. I'll put it really near the top so you can fit everything on. Okay. Keep it quite good. Keep it in line, remember. It's what do you think they are? Well, you've got orange paint, so I'm thinking an orange. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's pointy. I know, a carrot. Yes, that's right. There. Now let's do the beetroot. Beetroot. Uh, beetroot with the bottle top. That's a really good beetroot. <laughs> the beetroot is so colourful, isn't it? There. Now. How about some tomatoes? I'll do the tomatoes. I'm using the cork for the tomatoes because the tomatoes are round and the cork's round. Remember, keep the tomatoes quite close to the beetroot. I need a bit more paint. I like tomatoes, don't you? Yes, I think they're probably my favourite. No, I think I'll do some green beans. Yes, some green beans. Use the edge because they're very long. I'm using the edge of a toilet roll. To make long, thin green beans. I love green beans, don't you? Yes, but not as much as tomatoes. <laughs> There. Now, I'll do this. I'm using some modelling clay in the shape of some butternut squash and I'm going to dip it in some yellow paint because the butternut squash is yellow. I'll do it sideways so we can put it on. Okay, okay. There. There. Now I'm going to do some red lettuce and I'm going to use this bubble wrap. We'll start with green, so it'll make it more red lettuce, won't it? Yeah. And I'm using this bubble wrap because it's quite bubbly and, well, fluffy. <laughs> and red lettuce is quite bubbly and fluffy. Now I'm going to use some purple. There. OK. Yes. Dab that on gently. There, that'll be enough. Okay. Oh! We forgot the leaves. Oh, <laughs> yes. Let's use with our fingers. Yes, I think that's a better idea. <laughs> there. That looks brilliant. Yes. They're really yummy. <laughs> I want to eat them. Me too. I spy some Green Balloon Club members. It must be time for this spot of the week. This week's spot is, is a molehill. And here are some clues to help you spot one. Molehills are piles of crumbly earth on the ground that are made from moles digging underneath. The moles dig out large holes. Once the moles have dug the tunnels, they use them for many years. Moles spend most of their time underground, so you probably won't see one. But if you're lucky enough, look out for its rounded body, soft grey fur, big front claws for digging, 
and a pink pointy snout. So remember the clues! Mole hills are piles of soil on the ground. You might find them on lawns, fields or woods. The soil is very crumbly when it's freshly dug. Now you spot some. Bye! If you manage to spot some mole hills, then you can get yourself a green star. At least we won't have any moles digging up our bean pots. Wow, you guys have done a great job potting up these beans. And I've got some sticks so that we can give them some support. There you go. So if we put a stick in next to each bean. This is for the runner beans because they like to run up these sticks. Mm -hmm. And I'll put this on the top. And if you start gently winding them round, okay. then after a little while, they'll start growing up these poles themselves. Very gently. That's it. Is that right, Nature Chris? That's perfect. There we go. Nature Chris, I think we're coming into land. Oh, goodness, yes. Quick positions, everyone. Thanks for coming to fly with us today. Maybe you could print your own vegetable garden. Or perhaps you could spot some mole hills. Or maybe you could visit to Bluebell Wood. See you next week. Bye! How do you make a rain catcher? You'll need an empty plastic bottle, a wooden spoon, a ruler and some things to decorate your wooden spoon with. Number one. First, ask a grown-up to cut the top off your plastic bottle. Number two. Turn the top of your bottle over and place it back into the bottle base. Number three. This is where your wooden spoon comes in. Measure and draw out one centimetre spaces using a pen and a ruler. This is going to be your dipstick for measuring the rainfall each day. Number four. You can decorate your dipstick however you like. You could use googly eyes. You can draw a face on it. And wool makes great hair. Great sticking, Levi. Pink. <laughs> Number five. Leave your rain catcher outside on a level surface. You can put some stones around the base to keep your rain catcher nice and steady. Number six. Next time it rains, you can measure how much rain has fallen using your dipstick. <laughs> That's how you make a rain catcher. Nuzzle and scratch. Alpacas on a mission. A mission to help. Whether you need it or not, they are... Hooves for hire! Give me some hoof nurse. Yeah. Ready for anything. <laughs> Quick. I've got some pants on my head. No job is too easy. Hello, the carrot. Alpaca in distress. Oh, here's an alpaca in distress. <laughs> Fun packed alpacas. <laughs> Are you ready for nozzle and scratch? Weekends at 10.50 on a CBB screen near you. <laughs> nozzle and scratch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Spring is in the air here at the CBeebies Garden and your flowers are growing tall. Let's take a look at them. We're going to start with this beautiful bloom from Archie, who is just three years old. Thank you very much, Archie. The lots of glitter and sparkle and lots of shapes on your flower there. Thank you also to Laura, who's five, for this flower. Again, lots of shapes and beautiful colours. Thank you, Laura. And thanks to Jasmine, who's five, for this pink flower made up of scrunched up tissue. Very nice. 
thank you to Chloe, who's three, for making this flower using pom-poms and different shapes as well. And also thank you to Patrick, who's three, for this flower with some foil in the middle and some feathers as well. Very nice indeed. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you to Tia for this flower made up of lots of different colourful paper. Thank you for all those flowers. They are beautiful.